Hello friends, welcome to Vim as a complete ID tutorial for web and data science development. In this video series, I will explain in detail everything you need to know about how to get started with latest Vim 9.0 editor and set up your workflow to use Vim as an IDE rather than just a code editor. At the end of this video series, you will be able to set up your developer environment like this. You will be able to run HTML, JavaScript, Node.js, TypeScript frameworks like Angular, React, or Vue, or maybe data science environment like Julia or Python. At this point, you might ask why Vim? Vim is one of the fastest code editors just like Emacs. Using Vim, you can use any mobile devices to connect to a powerful dev environment remotely. All you need is just a terminal window. Also, I think Vim is an addiction. Once you get used to working on Vim, you will never go back to any other code editor. And now, after Vim 9.0 release, it claims to be 10 to 100 times faster than its previous version. In this series, I will show you how you can use Vim with Tmax to code and run Angular, Flutter, Node.js and data science application inside your terminal window. These are the topics I'm going to cover in this video today. I'm going to show you how you to install or perhaps upgrade to newer version of Vim 9.0. I will also cover how to move inside the Vim and quickly learn the key bindings. We'll cover everything about the Tmax. We'll learn how to set up VM plugin and VM macros. At the last of the series, we'll set up our Vim as an IDE system to start coding in JavaScript, TypeScript, Angular, HTML, Flutter, Julia, and Python. Whatever code key bindings I will show in these tutorials is also published as a blog. In the video description below, you'll find links to this blog. And I will also include links to cheat sheets like VI Editor Cheat Sheet, Tmux Cheat Sheet, and I'm also, I will include a sample VMRC configuration file. Although I suggest not to use cheat sheets and instead just practice Vim. So let's get started. Here I'm opening a command prompt terminal window on my Windows machine. You can open it by typing cmd on Windows run prompt. Now let me first change Microsoft DOS prompt to a PowerShell, type PowerShell, and now ssh into my remote Linux machine. ssh hyphen i followed by the path to the key, username at the rate IP address. Also, just to call out, in case if you are interested to know how to set up a complete Ubuntu or Debian Linux cloud virtual machine, I have published another blog to cover this topic. In this blog, you will not only set up a complete Linux virtual machine, I have shown how to set up a complete Linux desktop with these softwares like LibreOffice, Java, PyCharm, Python, IntelliJ, Java, VS Code, Node.js, and Android Studio, etc. Now coming back to your terminal window, first go to your root directory, cd front slash. If you type ls here, you will find most important Linux directories, which are mostly responsible to keep your Linux running. 99% of the Linux systems come with pre-vim pre-installed. So if I type vim here, it will open vim editor. As you can see, I'm at the version 8.1, which I need to upgrade to version 9.0. Now before we start upgrading, let's find out where current Vim is installed. So if I go and browse to my shared directory, so let's go cd into ls, cd into user, and inside the user folder, you'll find a directory called share. So cd into user, cd into share. And if you do ls here, there are a lot of files here, so I'm going to search for only specific Vim directories. So ls hyphen la, and type vim star. So it will only bring the directories whose name it starts with vim. As you can see, vim81 is installed here. Also notice there are two other very important files which are inside etc directory. Let's browse to etc directory and try to open these two files, vimrc or vimrc.tiny file. vimrc.tiny file is the file where runtime path is kept. So that means that's how your Linux knows which Vim to run. So let me open this. As you will see on the screen, that is pointing to a folder called user, share, Vim, and Vim81. That's how your system knows which Vim version to open when Vim uh, command is issued on the command prompt. Let's browse to Vim9 official documentation. That means Vim.org. And here you will find instruction how to download and install VI on your Linux distribution or any other Windows or Mac machine. As per the documentation, you will see the easiest way to install is git clone the vim9 repository or just do a sudo opt install vim. Now here, you will also find documentation specific to vim9. 
I highly suggest to go through this documentation. Here they have explained why Vim 9 is faster than its previous versions and also they compare Vim 9 with, with its previous version and other um, IDE like you know Python or Lua based editors. As you can see Vim new is almost like uh, 10 times or 10 to 100 times faster than its previous version. Now if you follow this documentation or try to do sudo opt install or git clone this repository, be careful because as of today it will only install the previous version Vim 8.1. In future it may change. But as of now it only installed the Vim 8.1. So what I'm going to do instead, instead of I'm going to do sudo opt install or downloading it there, I'm going to download a specific version, a specific um, package, the Debian based package from the repository. So let's uh, open another terminal window. I'm going to go to my home directory here. And instead of doing a sudo opt install vim, I'm going to um, first add a new repository, a specific private repository that is Jonathan F hyphen front slash PPA. So sudo add app repository PPA colon Jonathan F front slash vim. And here if you hit enter, it's going to ask you because it's an unofficial package, it will ask you permission to do so. As you can see, unofficial package for Vim. Again, this thing may change. So please, when you're watching this video, please go to the vim9.org and figure it out if sudo opt install does install the latest version of Vim. Then you do not need this command. All right, so here I've downloaded the newer version and it's as simple as that. Now, if you do sudo opt install, Vim is going to install the newer version. Just say yes. All right, and you, as you can see, if you go through the uh, go through this message, it is saying that it is also going to change your Vim runtime and Vim dot Vim hyphen tiny file, um, because those are the files under your shared folder and etc folder, which points to where how the Vim is installed and how the Vim is configured. All right, so if you do Vim version now, you should be able to see the latest version. As simple as that. Now we have installed latest version of Vim. In next section, we will see how to move, how to use the key binding to move inside Vim.